an ice cube 30 grams 0 degrees Celsius is left sitting on a kitchen table where it gradually melts the temperature in the kitchen is 25 degrees okay calculate the change in entropy of the ice as it melts into the water at 0 degrees Celsius okay so clearly uh, here uh, we do have a 0 degrees and uh, uh, there's a slight change in the volume but we will assume as indicated that the change in the volume is fixed we know that uh, water uh, loses uh, its Q is one second let me look it up the uh, the uh, latent heat of fusion of ice is actually uh, 333 so L is 333 joules per gram which means it takes 333 joules to melt one gram of ice uh, okay and so that means the the total amount of heat needed uh, to accomplish this change from ice to water will just be the mass however many grams we have times L so uh, we have 30 grams times 333 joules per grams these two guys cancel and we get Nine thousand nine hundred and ninety joules. <clears throat> okay, uh, we've learned in this chapter that uh, since this is happening at constant temperature, uh, the entropy change in the water or delta S. will equal the amount of heat added divided by the temperature of the system in Kelvin so if I just plug this stuff in here I will get Delta S change in entropy is equal to 9990 divided by so I will change the temperature 0 to Kelvin 0 degrees to Kelvin so I would add 273.15 so this would be uh, thirty six point uh, five seven joules per Kelvin. That's uh, my change in entropy for the first part during that phase change. Okay, uh, in part B, it says. Calculate the change in entropy of the water from the melted ice. So now we have water at zero degrees to twenty-five degrees. So we're going. So here we went in part A. We went from zero degrees ice to zero degrees water. Okay. Here we are going from zero degrees water to twenty-five degrees water so on the first part clearly we did not have a change in temperature and that's why we were allowed to use the definition of the entropy as being the ratio between the heat added and the temperature of the system here now as the temperature of the water starts to increase the temperature is going to vary taking all the values from 0 degrees to 25 degrees so that means we have to use the relation between the entropy and the heat capacity that involves an integral so that we can account for this temperature change and that is delta s is equal to the integral of cv 
over the temperature times dt from t initial to t final. And this comes from the fact that when the temperature is changing, uh, uh, we we write ds as cv dt over t. So if the temperature is changing, then uh, significantly, as you add heat, uh, we have to uh, uh, find find out what ds each for each step, counting this change as individual steps, and then we sum them up. So this kind of Riemann sum becomes an integral. Okay, now if at this point if Cv is relatively constant over the temperature range of interest, which it is in this case, we can it becomes a number, and as you know, we can pull this outside the integral. And if I do that. I will get delta S to be CV. Integral of 1 over T dt will be ln T from T initial, T final. So this becomes CV ln T final minus T initial, which ln T final minus ln T initial, which is just T final over T initial. And so uh, CV... Uh, for water, you could look that up in the table. This is the heat capacity of water. Uh, Ti is the initial temperature. T final is the Tf is the final temperature. This is four point one eight six. So we will get here. Um, uh, what was it? The four point one eight six. Uh, this is joules per one gram Kelvin, but we don't have one gram, we have 30 grams, so we'd have to multiply this by 30 grams to get CV. And then uh, this would be LN T final is, uh, we went to how much? 25 degrees, so 25 plus 273.15 divided by 0 plus 273.15 and plugging this in we get Ten point ninety nine. Let's just round to eleven. So delta S for this phase will be eleven joules over Kelvin. This here can cancel out, and we get joules per Kelvin. Here we have Kelvin over Kelvin, so this is unitless, and we get joules over Kelvin. Okay, uh, for part C it says calculate the change in entropy of the kitchen, the room, as it gives up heat to the ice water system. Okay, well, uh, the uh, the total entry, the the amount of heat that went uh, into the water had to have came from the room from the room's air. So uh, whatever heat I had would have to come uh, from the room. So that means uh, I could find out uh, Q total, okay? So Q total was initially we had uh, uh, 9,990 joules. Uh, plus next in the next phase I had four point uh, one eight six times thirty 
time so I'm using here mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature to find out how much heat went from the air's room into the ice from zero degree is a degree uh, sorry for, uh, for for water from zero degrees to water 25 degrees and the first 9990 is ml from zero degrees ice to zero degrees water this would be the total heat added to the water system ice water system so 30 uh, times change in temperature which would be 25 plus 273 it's going to be 25 because we're subtracting uh, we're subtracting 27 7315 okay and if we add this up we get 1 three one two nine point five joules okay so assuming that the temperature of the room doesn't change doesn't vary we are holding the room fixed at room temperature so uh, the temperature for the room is uh, 298 Kelvin let's say that's room temperature so that means the uh, change in the entropy of the room will just be uh, minus Q over T since temperature is fixed we don't need an integral here so this is Q total over the temperature of the room because the 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 total temperature that was gained by the ice water system came from the room and therefore the temperature the amount of temperature lost by the room is the same as the amount of uh, the amount of heat gained by the ice water system is the same as the amount of heat lost by the air in the room and so that's why I'm using the same Q so this would be uh, minus one three and the reason for the negative is because uh, this went from the room to the ice water system one three one two nine point five joules heat energy is conserved however entropy is not conserved uh, the weird thing in thermodynamics is entropy is actually half conserved uh, because uh, it, it, the reason is you can't destroy it but you could create it as we will see in this example in fact that's the whole essence of the second law of thermodynamics is that the entropy is in a continuous uh, uh, continuous uh, on a, is, a, is, in, is on a continuous rise continuous increase of the universe Continuous increase. Okay, so one three one two nine point five divided by two nine eight. Forty four point zero six joules per Kelvin. Okay, now uh, let's find out uh, what was the total. We oh, we already did. We already found out that the entropy, the total entropy increase of water. We have to add them up now. So so this is for the room. Right? Uh, it's a negative. And the entropy of water it will be the total that I found. It's 11 plus 36.57. So, this is 47.57. So this is change in entropy in the water ice system here. And th that one is in the room. So what's the net change of entropy? Okay, so this concludes, by the way, part B was asking for C, change in entropy of the kitchen as it gives up heat 
to the melting ice water okay so this would be uh, the answer to that part of the question would be this let's box it delta sr right here okay and now uh, going on to part d it says uh, calculate the net change in the entropy of the universe during this process okay well we have the uh, it's going to be the sum of the two changes um, so delta s total will be a change in entropy in the room plus the change in entropy of the water ice system which I already found up here in the in the first step uh, so that's total of 47.57 so I get uh, minus 44.06 plus 47.57 and uh, this would be which is the entropy gained by the universe okay should be 3.51 positive 3.51 joules per Kelvin clearly this process does involve again an increase an overall increase in the entropy as demanded by the second law of thermodynamics so there's no violation second law of thermodynamics this process is irreversible Okay, because the change in entropy of the system is positive, we cannot undo this. We cannot go back to negative change in entropy. It's called an irreversible process. And the second law of thermodynamics is indeed not violated. This concludes the problem.